Hello, it's Jay again from Four Fives Designs. Welcome to this channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make the leaves of a crocheted rose so that you'll end up with a realistic looking crocheted rose, something like this. This is the fourth in a five part series of videos. So please check out the other videos. The first one talks about all the basic stitches and techniques you need to crochet a rose like this. The second is the petals, the third is the sepals of the rose, and this is the fourth, showing how to make these leaves. The final one will be how to put all those together so that you end up with your realistic looking crocheted rose. We're going to now make the leaf for the rose. I'll just remind you what the rose looks like. So we're going to concentrate on making the leaves today. Just before I begin, I just wanted to mention um, yarn and the weight of the yarn. Because if you're doing this um, rose, what you want to be looking at is doing the leaves and the sepals with the same weight yarn as the petals. And what I mean by the weight of the yarn, um, if you have a look at this one that I've been using for demonstration purposes, this is super chunky yarn. As you can see, it's really quite thick. I'll just zoom in so you can see. A lot of people use for their crochet products double knitting wool, which is a lot finer than that super chunky wool. And for the rows that um, I've been making, what I use is lace weight yarn. This yarn here is absolutely beautiful. Look at the colours in that. That is 100% silk and it's lace weight yarn. So it's very, very fine. Just see the difference between that super chunky and the lace weight yarn. Incredible, isn't it? So as long as you're using the same weight yarn for your leaves as you have for your petals then your rose is not going to look odd. So just before we begin to do um, the leaves uh, what I'm going to do is show you two different leaves one that's more straightforward so the pattern is more straightforward and one that is a little bit more involved and gives perhaps a more realistic shape of rose leaf. So I'll just show you the difference the basic leaf looks something like that, and I shall go through a tutorial on that in a moment. Then the other one is a little bit more involved, a little bit tricky perhaps to do because it's got a lot more shaping, but it produces something that's a lot more realistic as far as a rose leaf is concerned. Before we begin, I just wanted to mention um, why we do this leaf and the pattern of this leaf and the way that we do using um, increase stitches, whether it's a double crochet increase, a half treble crochet increase or a treble crochet increase. And I'm showing you on this example here, this leaf that I've done follows the pattern that I'm about to show you and that it uses um, a row of double crochet, then half treble, then treble crochet, with a bit of shaping at the end using a combination of those stitches to produce the shape. But what this doesn't include are the increase stitches where you um, do a double half treble or treble crochet increase to increase the number of stitches you've got. And you can see what happens when you don't do that. Although you've got the shape of the leaf, what happens if you don't increase the number of stitches and just continue going around the leaf, you'll end up with a, a curled up version that looks more like a little boat than a leaf. So we'll crack on now with the tutorial, starting with the basics. I normally crochet by eye, 
but for these leaves I think it's important that I share a pattern with you. So I've devised this pattern um, for how to make the leaves, how to show the detail of the leaves and it's in two parts. Stage one is the simple leaf and stage two is the more realistic looking leaf. So I hope you can see this. I'm just videoing the pattern that I've done. This is the first stage, stage one, the simple leaf. And then I'm going to go on and show you how to do the pico edge and then the more realistic leaf. So having done the simple leaf, you can add, if you wish, a pico edge to that leaf to give you a more realistic looking leaf without adding a lot of complicated details. And this is the pattern that shows you how to do that. And if you want to add an even more realistic look to your leaf, then you can try stage two of the pattern. And this is what I'm showing you here. This is the last step to that more realistic looking leaf. Completing stage two, if you've got to this stage, fantastic. And I've included some abbreviations there for you to help you interpret the pattern. If you carry on watching this video, I'll show you how to do this in practice. So you can choose whether to follow the pattern or the video. Whether you're going to do the simple leaf or the more complex and realistic leaf, you need to start off with a foundation chain of 16. So, as we do with most of our crocheting, we start with that loop and we're going to chain 16. Once you've got your chain of 16, you're going to start crocheting into the one, two, third stitch from the hook. Let me just check, make sure you can see that then. So the stitch that's attached to the hook is stitch number one, stitch number two, and we're going to be working into that third stitch from the hook. Just doing a double crochet. And the reason we're doing it into the third stitch is we've then got two chains, two stitches, two chains that are left at the end, which will help form the pattern of the, the leaf. So we'll continue doing that double crochet in each of those stitches until we come to the end. So when you've got to the end of that row, turn your crochet around, tuck the little tail that you used to cast on out the way so it doesn't get confusing. So your crochet is going to look something like that and then you're going to chain two. So remember when we started this off, we worked in the third chain from our initial foundation chain to form a stitch. So we need to do the same at this end. So we've got those two chains there and then we're going to turn the crocheting, hook, crocheting sorry, around and start again with our double crochets in that first stitch. and then continue along this row, one double crochet in each of those stitches. It is the back of the foundation chain. So we started by going into the third chain from the end. So we've got a loop of two chains left there. And when we've come to this end, we've chained two to work backwards, so at each end we'll have two chains left. I'm going to continue to work along here and I'll join you at the end. So now we've got to the end 
And what we've got at this end is those two chains that we didn't use when we first started this um, crocheting. So what we're going to do now is a double crochet into each of those two chains that were left. So there's the first one. And there's the second one. So that's completing. Let me just do that again. I've lost sight of what I was doing. Just pull that there a minute. So we've now, we've got the chain of 16 and we've worked around that once using double crochet, just adding two chains at either end and finishing it off with a double, uh, double crochet in each of the two chains at the end. So we now continue to work along the next row or the next round and that's going to consist of doing half treble stitches this time. So but first of all, just to get us round that corner, and um, remember I showed you what would happen if you continued round and you did a stitch in each one and kept on going round and round, you, your crochet would naturally curl up like this. What will happen when you come to the end of your crochet? If you're not careful, the same thing will happen. So to avoid that, we need to increase the number of stitches we've got in this round. So the first thing we do in this first stitch is a double crochet like we would normally do, but do another double crochet in that same stitch. So that's called a double crochet increase. And that's basically two double crochets in the same stitch. That's easy enough, isn't it? And then we're gonna continue along that row just doing half treble crochets until we get to the end. So that's the first one. That's the second half treble. And I'm going to continue working these half trebles on this round until I get to the end. And I'll join you at the end. So I've continued to do those half trebles along that row until I was getting towards the end. Now just to show you where you stop when you get to the end because you're going to change your stitch now. If I just turn the crocheting around a little bit and I'm going to zoom in a little bit more and so I hope you can see this. What we're looking for are those three top stitches. That's the middle one there and the two either side. So originally we had the row of stitches, the chain that we started with and we went round each side. So that row there, when you take it to the top, that's your top stitch. One top stitch there. And then we've got a stitch either side. So when we crocheting along here. I'll just zoom back out a little bit because that's quite close to. We're going to stop when all we've got left is those three stitches at the top. So I'm a couple of stitches away. So I'll do a couple more of these half treble stitches. and just check where I am. So I've got those three stitches around the edge. So that's where I'm going to stop, if you can see that a bit closer there. I've got the top stitch and I've got one to the side of it and that's where I've stopped. So to get us round that, round the edge of this leaf, 
using the top three stitches I'm going to do a half treble increase in the first of those three stitches I shall do a double crochet increase into that very top stitch and then a half treble increase into the third of those top three stitches. So that's the first stitch into that. Go back into the same one for that half treble increase. So that's got us round that end. And to finish this particular round of half trebles, I'm just gonna go along that row now with half treble crochets Again, until I get to the position where I've got three stitches left at that top end. So we've continued along that row, which completes this second round. And we're going to stop as we did before, when we've got just those three top stitches remaining. So I've, I've stopped there. My next stitch is the first of those three top stitches and we get round this little loop, this, this ring of stitches here by doing a half treble increase as we've done before this is helping make sure that the leaf is flat because we're increasing the number of stitches I'm just going to do that again I could feel that it wasn't the tension on it wasn't quite right. So back into that stitch for the second half treble, and then we're going to finish by doing a double increase in that very top stitch. And that's the second double crochet in that stitch. So what we've done now, we've done a row of double crochet and we've done a row of half trebles with a little bit of definition at the end. If you think in that row there, that last row that was half trebles, we'd got double crochets at either end just to try and get a better shape of leaf. We're going to do a final row in this simple leaf now And what we're going to do here is start with a double crochet and another double crochet in that same stitch. So we've done a double crochet there. And then as we did on the other side, before we completed that last round, we're going to be doing a half treble increase to complete our journey of getting our crocheting around that corner and then we're simply going to do oops, a treble crochet stitch in each of the stitches along this row so I will see you at the end of this row so I've completed that row and I've ended the crochet this time with those first three top stitches plus one stitch and in that plus one stitch is where I'm going to be doing the half treble crochet followed by another half treble crochet in that same stitch my wool and then I'm going to be doing a in these three stitches that go around those that top a double crochet increase a double crochet in that top stitch and a double crochet in the stitch next to it So 
So each time we are building up the number of stitches that we're having on the row so that the, the leaf remains flat and rather than using on this third row treble crochets all the way around that leaf we're varying the size of the stitches we've got so that we get a better shaped leaf. So to match the other side the next stitch we do is a half treble, half treble increase and then we continue down this row with full treble stitch and this is the last row in this simple leaf pattern. Now you should probably think you know if this is simple goodness knows what the more challenging leaf will be like but fear not it will be very similar to this but the, it have a separate final row around the outside another row of trebles and has a little bit more definition in it but I'll continue with this and I'll see you at the end so we continue to the end until we've got the stage where we've got this three stitches at the top plus one more and then as we've done before we'll be doing a half treble increase that's a half treble stitch followed by another half treble going into the same stitch then we're doing the double crochet with another double crochet in the same stitch that's a double crochet increase and then finishing at the top of that with a single double crochet in that stitch and that has finished your basic leaf shape. All that remains now is to cast off so cut your yarn Pull your thread through, tighten it and then just to neaten it off, if you take a crocheting hook, grab that yarn through and that will secure it for you. I'm just going to snip that off. I normally do a couple of times through there just to make sure it's really secure. So you've got something then that looks like a, a leaf, you could happily use that. This is obviously a bit distorted in terms of size because I've used double knitting yarn. And there's one we've made previously. Once, once you've done this simple version of the leaf, you can add this pico detail to the edge which makes it a little bit more authentic and like a rose leaf and I've got a tutorial separate tutorial that goes through all these basic stitches and techniques for this rose but I'll show you how you do that pico now what I've done so far I've done one double crochet a second double crochet and just focus for now on that little stitch at the top, that's the top of the double crochet we've just done. To make the pico, you do one chain and then you go back into the top loop of that double crochet, grab your yarn, so you've got two loops on your hook, and you pull that yarn all the way through to make that little nodule. I'll just zoom out again so you're not Apologies if this is making you feel a bit seasick. You can also do a pico in every double crochet stitch you do. So that's one double crochet, one chain and one pico. 
I'll just do one, a couple more of those so you can see the difference. So instead of doing another double crochet now, you do your chain and you go into the loop of that double crochet. Just going to do that again. You can also do, instead of a pico every second double crochet stitch, is to do one in every double crochet stitch. So I'll just show you what that looks like. There's a single double crochet, a single chain, and then back into the loop of that double crochet stitch to produce your pico. So we do that again, a double crochet stitch, and that's the top of your double crochet there, just above my thumb. You do your single chain, and then back into that double crochet stitch. I'll do one more time so you can see clearly what the pattern looks like. You do one double crochet, one chain, and then back into that double crochet loop to make a pico. So this first section of the leaf, I did the pico stitch in the second of two double crochets. So I did double crochet, double crochet, one chain and a pico. Double crochet, double crochet, one chain and a pico. And here we've done double crochet, chain, pico double crochet, chain, pico. So you can see which one of those you prefer and which one looks more authentic. I think I prefer that one. So you, can you could just continue all the way around your leaf doing that pico in whatever style that you want to. However, if you want to make it even more realistic, you can see with this leaf here, We've made sure that the outer row goes into a peak or a point. You're still doing a pico stitch to get that point, but just to get that shape, what I've done here is in that top stitch, I've done a treble. And in the stitches either side, I've done a half treble, just to give that shape. So I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm just gonna zoom out, zoom out slightly. So I'm just going to, just for ease, continue, so it doesn't look strange, doing the single version of the pico pattern. As in one double crochet stitch, one chain and a pico. Until I get to this top point again that we've been working with all along. So I reckon that one there is a stitch I want to go and use for my treble crochet. So the next stitch I'm going to use as a normal single pico with a double crochet stitch. I'm then going to do a half treble in the next stitch, single chain, and back into the top loop of that um, half treble to do the pico until I get to that top stitch and then I'm going to do a treble in there I'm going to do a two chain pico but going back again into the top of that stitch and finishing the treble in the same stitch The next stitch, just to make it equal either side, is a half treble pico. If I do that there. And the next one, we're back to the double crochet pico. Oops. 
Sorry that my needle keeps catching the camera as I'm filming. So then we've got something that looks very authentic and like a natural rose. And you obviously to finish off, you continue to your piques around that side. I think I prefer the single double crochet with the pico in each double crochet without the gap in between. I think it's easier when you come to do this um, section at the top. So just to recap what we did there, when we got three stitches at the top, we did a half double, half treble, single chain, pico stitch. We did a treble stitch, two chains, a pico stitch, and then a treble stitch back into that top stitch. And then finish that this little peak at the top with a half treble, single chain, pico. So I've continued to crochet all the way around that side using double crochet, single chain, pico. Double crochet, single chain, pico all the way along. So you can see the effect that that creates. We've got the lovely tip at the top of the leaf and we've got two versions of picots dependent on which style you like, either the closer knit one or the alternately spaced one. Either way, by adding that picot detail, you change a simple basic leaf into something that looks really special. If you decide to go on and do the slightly more complicated um, but more realistic shape to the rose, then obviously you don't go on to add the pico once you've done the simple version of the leaf. You just need to do one more round of treble crochets, but we add a little bit more detail this time. So we start off just getting around that top corner, so we're picking up where we left off from completing that simple leaf. And we start off by doing a double crochet increase just to get us around this corner this is and then two double crochets we're then going to start to build up the shape along that side and we're going to start with a half treble increase stitch So that's one half treble and another half treble into the same stitch and then follow that with just one half treble. We're now going to start to do the treble increases at uh, the treble stitches and we start off first of all um, by doing a normal treble increase stitch. So now we've got round that corner, we're going to start to pick up the treble crochets and we do um, a slightly different pattern than before. Instead of just doing treble crochets all along this row, we do two treble crochets and then slip in, when nobody's looking, a treble crochet increase. This not only does it help to keep your leaf flat, but also adds a little bit more shape. So we're gonna do that two more times. So we've got a treble crochet, another treble crochet, and a treble crochet increase. So 
So that's the first of those two times. And you can see how that's really beginning to shape that leaf. Do that one more time. That's a treble crochet. Another treble crochet. And a treble crochet increase. So we're building up that shape, getting it nice and plump and looking like a rose leaf. We just need to then continue to shape around that corner. So we can do a half treble, a half treble increase. Then we're going to do a double crochet increase. Finish off with three double crochets. That's one, two, three. And we're going to repeat that pattern but in reverse, going back down the other side. So we start with those three single crochet, uh, single double crochets. Does that sound right? So <laughs> we're not doing double crochet increase first of all, just three double crochets. Then we'll do a double crochet increase and a half treble increase. Followed by a half treble and then we're going to do that same shaping with the trebles that we did before but this time it'll be in reverse so we're starting with a treble crochet increase and then we're going to do two trebles and do that little pattern twice more so we do let me just redo that one I don't like how that came out then We do a treble crochet increase, a treble crochet, and another treble crochet. So can you see we've really begun to shape that leaf. This does look, this does look very different because it's oversized, but it does work really well with the finer yarn. So what we need to do now is to come back up that side. Let's just check. I've done... I need to do one more of those. So I do a treble. Treble crochet increase. And then two more trebles. So I've done three of that little pattern. Up to now. So to finish off them, again we do a reverse to what we did before. So we've got a half treble, half treble increase, and finish off, taking us back to the top with double crochets. What I would do now to finish off, I'd do a slip stitch to finish that off. So there you have it. Obviously you would then now go on to do your pico detail all around the outside. Um, my preference is to do um, a double crochet pico um, with a single chain. Let me just show you. Double crochet single chain back into that double crochet and to continue that all the way around so double crochet single chain pico back into that stitch and I would continue in that fashion all the way along I'm 
just going to show you now how that looks using the very fine um, Shetland um, lace weight yarn and using two colours of yarn together. So I'm going to switch now at this point and then show you what it's like doing that final stage, adding the pico detail, also adding some wire and I even in the next stage change the colour of my yarn. So I'm going to finish this leaf off now um, by doing the outer edge, um, the picots and adding the wire but I'm also going to change the colour of the yarn. This um, leaf I've done using two um, yarns together so I'm using this one, they're both Shetland yarn um, this one is Shetland Lamb's Wool in Shady Forest from Watercolours and Lace. And this one is the same name, Shady Forest, but it's Shetland Cobweb Lace. It's ultra, ultra fine. Although it's um, lace weight, it's fine lace and it's very, very fi fine. Lovely on its own, both of these are lovely on their own. But I like to add the two together just to give a little bit more definition and colour to the leaves. So what I'm going to do now first of all is to change the colour of that outer edge. Um, rather than using any dyes, paints, confectionery powder, anything to colour the leaves, I'm just simply going to change one of the yarns. So I've got two yarns here. I'm going to keep the lamb's wool yarn which is slightly thicker. I'm going to snip off the other yarn, just move that out of the way for now, because I'm now going to add this lovely bitter chocolate truffle colour. This is also in the Shetland cobweb lace, so I've just snipped off the um, green cobweb lace and I'm going to replace that with this bitter chocolate truffle. So just before I do, I'll just a bit of a shout out. I know I keep talking about this, this yarn from Watercolours and Lace, um, but I just want to show you this now, because I think it's the, the thing that makes the biggest difference make, when making these roses. These are the two of the colours. You, you get these skeins of yarn through the post. They arrive very, very quickly. Um, for the, the pink and green that I've used for my roses, that's a custom order that they've done for me. Um, it feels like getting a little birthday present when you get these through the post because they come wrapped in, um, this one would come wrapped in green tissue paper with a little green ribbon round and then this one, the bit of chocolate truffle, would come in brown tissue paper with brown ribbon round. It just feels lovely. Um, obviously you then need to wind it um, into a ball before you start using it. I've treated myself now to a yarn winder which produces this, which is far easier to do um, than, than wrapping it round um, a plastic bottle or wrapping it into a ball like this, um, but definitely worthwhile getting that yarn. So I'm now going to then add that brown chocolate truffle yarn to the yarn I've got already. So if you saw the tutorial of making the petals, um, I showed you how you change the colour of the yarn um, for the outer edge of a petal. It's the same sort of principle here, except I'm keeping that existing yarn and I'm adding a different colour. So, get yourself a bit organised. Okay, it might be a little bit fiddly, but it is well worth the effort. So, there's the tail of that green cobweb yarn that I've snipped off. Here's my new yarn. I'm just going to do a double crochet as normal into that top stitch and I'm going to capture both those yarns, the green and the brown, and then complete that stitch. I'm going to pull those down now so that they're out of the way and all neat and tidy. And what I'm going to do now then is to continue around this um, leaf doing the single picots. The only other step I'm going to do now 
is to add a wire because with the leaves it is definitely advantageous if you put a wire around so that you can shape the leaves the way you want. I'm using green wire this time, um, slightly different to the very fine silver wire that I use for the petals. You can see that it's slightly thicker. The silver wire that I use for the petals is 0.33 millimeters. I'm not entirely sure what thickness this wire is um, because it, I've had it for some time now when the original packaging has, has come off it. Um, I would say it's probably about half a millimeter or maybe um, 0.6 of a millimeter thick. So you don't need it too thick. Um, but a little, probably a little bit sturdier than the petals. So all I'm going to do now, as I've done with the petals in previous tutorials, is to add that wire to this next round. And before I start doing the picots, I'm just going to capture that wire with a stitch, a double crochet stitch, as I've done when I've been doing the petals. So I'm going into the next stitch around my leaf, underneath the wire, round my yarn, and I'm taking that yarn through and making sure that with that final loop through, I've captured that wire. So that wire now is through that stitch. And keeping everything nicely in order, all I'm going to do now is to continue around that leaf doing a pico. So for this one, I'm doing one chain back in the double crochet stitch to do the pico. Then doing a double crochet in the next stitch before I do the next pico. So I'll then do a double crochet in that next stitch single chain and then back in there with a pico finish that off with a double crochet and then start again so double crochet chain pico And finish that pico off with the double crochet in the next stitch along. So I'm going to continue going around that leaf doing that little edge. So I've completed round the edge with that pico, snipped off my yarn and it's important and I've not shown you this before, probably because I think it's 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 obvious, but just for those of you who are complete novices, just make sure that you finish off tying off that um, extra yarn. There's nothing worse after all your hard work than um, finding that you your petal or your leaf starts to come undone. So all I'm doing is is grabbing my yarn and pulling it through. And I do that a couple of times before I snip that off so it's really secure. So you can't see it that side, you can't see it that side. I know I've almost got like a stitch of that yarn. Snip that off. And then you need to cover the wire with your florist tape. And to start with, I just make sure that the top of that wire is folded together so that it is, is really tight. And then I take my florist tape and I've discovered that you only really need half of this width for your leaves. You probably need about three inches, four inches worth. So I'm just gonna snip up there, cut off half of it find the sticky side by squashing it together, that's the sticky side. Wrap it around the top as close to that leaf as you can. 
wrapping it in this fashion first before you do what you should do with this um, stem tape which is to twist and pull so you twist your wire and pull your stem tape it's not like milking a cow which is squeeze and pull this is a definite twist and pull so twist your wire and pull your stem tape down so follow that all the way to the bottom it's quite a lot of wire on here I don't need all of that but I'll use that stem tape to get right to the bottom and I'm actually going to snip that off with my scissors because I don't need it to be that long so you know you've done it correctly if you can draw your fingers down that stem tape and it doesn't come undone so it's nice and neat at the top you can see there nice and neat at the top so once you've completed your rows and you've added your stem tape it is ready then to assemble